So this is a highly requested video. So I thought I should create this video for the YouTube. This video is all about how to create the flashcards. So in all my Instagram reels, I have emphasized on making flashcards as your effective revision technique. The reason why I, you know, say, ask you guys to uh, prepare the flashcards is that flashcards, they, you know, help in effective revision. They are the technique of spaced repetition. See, I have tried both the, both the things. Like I have tried the note taking also and I have tried making the flashcards also. And from my personal experience, I can tell you that flashcards are much better. Now, let me tell you the reasons why. The first reason is that as you can see this flashcard, there is a very, very little space available here. So if the space is very little, so you will only write the consolidated points that are very important. Okay. So in this way, you won't be writing the stuff that is not essential. Okay. So first and the foremost thing is that it will help you save your time. The second thing is that these are very handy. As you can see, I have a lot of flashcards and I, you know, actually carry them anywhere I want because they don't occupy much of the space and they are very easy to carry so whenever i travel in metro or in cab or whenever you know i have free time i carry them along with me and i you know usually do the space rep repetition technique followed by the revision technique now coming on to how to prepare the effective flashcard so let us take one example all right i'll show you how i prepare my flashcards so guys this is the basic stuff that you need to create the flashcards. I'm not saying that you need a lot of stuff to prepare them, but you can have different colored pens. You can have one pencil and post-it flags as well as one post-it stick on note. Okay, so this will help you to, you know, ju just uh, color code the important topics, the keyword and mind it, you should have colored pens because otherwise you won't be able to judge which part is asking about the question and which part is the explanation. Okay, so for easy identification, you need colored pens, the first and the foremost thing and the post-it flags and the stick on. Right. So let us begin with the flashcard preparing technique. So first of all, I would open up one flashcard. So I have different uh, sized flashcards depending on what type of topic I'm reading. So the topics that have actually more number of keywords. Keywords means that you have to pick the important lines from the question that actually help you to arrive at a diagnosis. So I'll give you an example. So the patient with diabetes comes to you, okay, and he is already obese and he is at a risk of hypoglycemia because several episodes of hypoglycemia had happened in the past also because he had been on a drug X, okay. Now you need a drug that would help in the weight loss as well as there is no risk of hypoglycemia, alright. So first of all, let me show you how I write on the front side of my flashcard. So this is the colored pen that I usually use on one side. So first of all, I'll write about the condition, the diabetic patient. The diabetic patient already on drug X, several episodes of hypoglycemia. His BMI is 32 kilogram per meter square all right that means he is already obese you call a patient obese when his bmi is more than or equal to 30 kg per meter square all right so there are two conditions in fact three he is having diabetes all right already on a drug x but he had several episodes of hypoglycemia in the past and third thing is he is obese okay so we have to act in such a manner that you know that could lower down his blood sugar levels so we have a target to decrease the blood sugar levels the second target is to lose some weight so weight loss and the third target is to decrease the risk of hypoglycemia in this patient 
decrease the risk of hypoglycemia in this patient now we have to address all these issues in this patient all right now let us proceed further so if if they ask you such type of question that a drug given via a parenteral route is suitable okay or they can give you a drug preferable by the subcutaneous route is preferred here which drug is that okay so i can give you the options is it metformin is it sulfonylureas is it glp1 receptor agonist exenatide all right so now first of all quickly focus on the concepts here okay so they have told you a diabetic already had having a lot of episodes of hypoglycemia in the past because he had been on a drug x that means the drug x would have been causing the episodes of hypoglycemia right now he is obese also so we have to address three issues and the, they have asked the drug given by the subcutaneous route first and the foremost thing the among all these three options the only drug that is given by the subcutaneous route is glp1 receptor agonist metformin is also given orally sulfonylureas are also given orally and the next thing is that sulfonylureas lead to what weight gain okay although i am not able to explain you properly how to you know just okay weight gain now let us come on to the other side of the flash card so i'll explain each and every option sulfonylureas weight gain metformin oral although metformin is also associated with decreased risk of hypoglycemia and weight loss but this is not a drug to be given by the subcutaneous route it is given orally and the third one is the glp1 receptor agonist glp1 is a incretin okay incretin is released in our body whenever we eat food and it helps to increase the insulin decrease the glucagon and prolong the gastric emptying time so glp1 is a incretin so glp1 receptor agonist is given subcutaneously plus there is no risk of hypoglycemia and they also lead to weight loss by slowing down the gastric emptying time so in this way we have easily solved our question okay we have addressed all these three issues blood sugar also decreased by giving glp1 agonist weight loss also achieved decreased risk of hypoglycemia also there all right so this is how this is the shortest way how to approach the flash cards and I bet you if you make your own questions if you make your own clinical scenarios you will never face a problem in understanding a concept I'll give an another example also Okay so now proceeding with the flash card of a different size so you guys might be wondering that how to you know choose which size of the flash card to prefer so it all depends on you I have the square shaped flash cards I have the rectangular flash cards the small rectangular flash cards i have the bigger ones so i have the colored ones also because sometimes you get bored making the same type of flash cards so that entirely depends on you and one more thing you can choose a bigger flash card if you have a lot of information to write on a page right uh, for example if the question has a lot of keywords obviously you will have to prefer a bigger page now coming on to the standard size of the flash card so this is my favorite standard size of the flash card so this is how it looks you can easily get to know which which size to buy which is very convenient for you to carry along now let us proceed with the case okay supposing we encounter a case the patient x okay the patient x yesterday or you can say two days back he ate fast food or junk food from outside the very next day he had diarrhea and on the next very day 
कि कंप्लेन्ड ऑफ वीकनेस इन दी बॉडी ही फेल्ट नंबनेस इन हिज हैंड एंड फीट एंड द मॉर्निंग ही वोक अप ही फेल्ट एज इफ ही वॉज नॉट एबल टू स्टैंड प्रॉपरली सो ही वेंट टू द फिजिशियन एंड ही वॉज बींग हॉस्पिटलाइज Within few hours of hospitalization, he started feeling very numb all over the body, and he was not able to hold his head up. So, the doctors they intubated him. prescribed ivig diagnose the condition all right so this posted flag is for you to identify from which system this question is so for example if you want to review the cns the neurology question so you can easily identify the system from which this question is so this patient after eating junk food from outside he had diarrhea the very next day and after one day more he he felt weak weak as well as he had numbness in the hands and feet and after that he was hospitalized and he was not able to hold his head up so the doctors had to intubate him and he was given ivig the most important keyword in this question is that he was given ivig and after eating food everything is happening okay so the diagnosis of this condition is gwen barre syndrome gbs okay gwen barre syndrome GBS is actually happening most commonly after Campylobacter jejuni infection Campylobacter jejuni infection and remember Campylobacter jejuni infection is most commonly caused by the fecal oral route or you can say it is most commonly caused by it's a food borne illness okay food borne illness so that means the patient had consumed junk food obviously he might was infected with the campylobacter jejuni he had diarrhea and after that he felt numbness what happens in gbs is that the patient's antibodies are formed against the gangliosides of the schwann cells and you guys might be knowing that schwann cells are responsible for the myelinize uh, myelination of the peripheral nervous system neurons right so if antibodies are against the schwann cells what is going to happen demyelination of the pns pns neurons demyelination and if demyelination of the pns neurons is taking place obviously the patient will feel numb there will be paresthesias right in the glove and stocking distribution I told you IVIG is the most important hint of the question because a patient feeling weak and having paresthesias after a diarrhea or you can say a upper respiratory tract infection or a gastrointestinal illness which is being IVIG the diagnosis becomes GBS all right <coughs> so in this there's a demyelination and the patient would have symptoms in the glove and stocking distribution and there is ascending paralysis ascending paralysis the alternate treatment is plasma pheresis and one more keyword i'll enter here is steroids have no role steroids have no role in gbs all right so either campylobacter infection or upper respiratory tract infection leading to the antibodies against to the gangliosides of the schwann cells schwann cells are responsible for the myelination of the pns neurons and if schwann cells are attacked there will be demyelination and there will be glove and stocking distribution type of presentation and after that there will be ascending paralysis all right so in this little flash card we have covered every important keyword of gbs and i would like to add one more thing that in csf there is a very peculiar finding of albuminocytological dissociation albuminocytological dissociation this means that the csf proteins 
are increased whereas the glucose and the cell count is totally normal all right so this is how you need to make a flash card so i know my handwriting here is not good because i have to quickly consolidate this in a short video but make sure that you make flash cards in this manner so the important clinical hints on this side and the diagnostic thing the answer on other side okay so it will help you to easily quickly revise the systems i hope you like this video and i would be coming up with more interesting videos with great exciting content so please subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't yet and there's a one more video about how to solve u word for the usmd step 1 please watch that also all right guys bye bye